we only need to memorize whatever that is explicitly mentioned in syllabus. In syllabus, there are only two. Carbotoblast with ammonia, carbotoblast with HCl. These are the only two. Only memorize these two. All the rest of them, we don't need to memorize. Again, memorizing the colors of my complexes, we are focusing on the differences between one transition metal and another transition metal, which is very painful. Eh? And you notice the syllabus actually don't really want us to do that. So ask yourself what the syllabus wants. And there's no need for us to memorize the colors for transition metal. But let's talk about this. This one we need to know because explicitly mentioned in syllabus, Carbotoblast add ammonia to Carbotoblast equals. Dropwise, I'll form a pale blue PPT. If I add ammonia in excess, then I will dissolve the pale blue precipitate to form a deep blue complex. So there are two things to it. So let's talk about each one of them part by part. Now the first one, forming this pale blue precipitate, we know that this is linked to copper hydroxide. So maybe we might be thinking that, oh, you know, it's a Cu2 plus equals, then ammonia is a base, so there's OH minus. So the OH minus will combine with the Cu2 plus to form the copper hydroxide. Now, actually, when I talk about ammonia, because ammonia is a weak base and it's only partially dissociated, so the concentration of OH minus from ammonia is actually very low. And there's no really a need for me to say that ammonia is a weak base, so it can give me OH minus. And we talk about OH minus from ammonia. There's no need for us to do that because ammonia itself, it is a proton acceptor. I can talk about the basicity for ammonia, just using ammonia alone. And the formation of the PPT, interestingly, is not related to the OH minus from ammonia. Ammonia is a base. It can pluck out the proton from water that is coordinated to your copper 2 plus. That means your copper is surrounded by six water. This water actually can lose a proton to ammonia. Then the hydroxide will come out. So the hydroxide doesn't come from dissociation of ammonia in aqueous medium. The OH minus actually comes from the water that is bonded to copper, losing H plus to NH3. So this explanation is a lot neater, it's a lot nicer. We don't need to talk about OH minus from ammonia, it's, also, it's not a requirement. And we also don't need to talk about OH minus from ammonia going in and doing ligand exchange and kick out two water because it will be targeting the oxygen copper bond and dt bond is harder for us to break. Involving OH bond, it is easier to break because this bond is more polar and it is outside, more exposed, easier for me to lose the H+. So you notice this process that I've scribbled here. Ammonia is a proton acceptor. Pluck out H+, from water. I break OH bond. H+, go to ammonia. I form NH4+, and this OH- will start to come out. But this OH-, huh, this oxygen, comes from water. I just do this a second time. I'll get the pale blue precipitate. So this process is just purely acid base. Plucking out a proton from water ligand is not a ligand exchange. Coordination number for your copper surrounded by six water at the beginning. Coordination number for copper is six. Product coordination number stays the same, which is within expectation because it is not a ligand exchange in the first place. It's just purely acid base. So the first one, explain forming your pale blue precipitate. Now the second idea is when you add excess ammonia, the pale blue PPT will dissolve to give me a deep blue complex. Now the easiest way for me to explain this is this is a ligand exchange. Four ammonia go in, kick out two OH- and two water from the precipitate to form this deep blue complex. And the formula for the deep blue complex, we just need to memorize it. Copper surrounded by four ammonia surrounded by two water. Overall, this is a two plus charge. Then we just balance the rest of the species accordingly. Basically, this will displace two OH- and displace two water. So we just need to memorize the formula for this deep blue complex. This is the one you need to memorize. Deep blue color is because of copper, four ammonia, two water, plus two charge. Pale blue PPT is copper, four water, two OH minus. Pale blue PPT. Now copper, two plus surrounded by six water. We should already know that this is blue solution. Of course, we need to know that, but we already have memorized it. Since secondary level, we should know that copper two plus equals this is blue. So we just need to memorize the pale blue PPT and the formula, deep blue complex and the formula. I think one question which is valid, uh, some of us might ask, how do I know the extent of the ligand exchange? Because I know this is a ligand exchange. And if you look at the pale blue PPT, the copper is coordinated to four water and two hydroxide. How do I know four ammonia goes in? And how do I know there are two different ligands with different numbers, four water, two hydroxide? How I know is take out two OH- minus and kick out two water? Why not different permutations of it? And I think this is a valid question, but we don't need to know if I do ligand exchange, which ligand is uh, exchange is favored and to what extent. 
we don't need to know that. It's not in syllabus. So for this one, my suggestion is we don't worry so much about it. Again, it is a valid question. Huh? If it is a legal exchange, how do I know what is the extent of the legal exchange? Uh, because there are six ligands to displace. So how do I know it displaced one of them, two of them, three of them, four of them? How many of them is being displaced? Uh, actually, what we just need to know is the formula for the complex, for this deep blue complex, is this copper 4 ammonia 2 OH minus. So this is pure memorizing. We don't need to explain why 4 ammonia going, kick out 2 OH minus, kick out 2 water. We don't need to be able to explain that. So we just need to memorize the formula for the complex and we just balance it accordingly. So my suggestion is that. Now this is a simpler explanation. We just say that ammonia goes in and kick out our hydroxide, kick out water, and form the deep blue complex. There's another explanation which is a little bit more complete, but is also more complicated. So you see which one your school is using, you just stick with what your school is using. The other explanation, let me just briefly talk about it. Uh, basically, when we add ammonia for ligand exchange, it doesn't really target the pale blue PPT, it actually targets the copper 2 plus surrounded by water. Remember, we mentioned any species in aqueous medium, there will be an equilibrium established involving the species and your copper 2 plus surrounded by water. So copper surrounded by water and hydroxide, this species here, in aqueous medium, there will be an equilibrium established between that guy and copper surrounded by water. And when ammonia comes in, ammonia will undergo ligand exchange with copper, surrounded by water, four ammonia goes in, kick out four water to form this deep blue complex. So this guy here, this guy here, and this one here is exactly the same, form the deep blue complex. But what it is decreasing is, it is decreasing the concentration for copper surrounded by six water, and it affects this concentration. So this guy concentration goes down. So if the concentration for your copper surrounded by six water, this concentration decreases, then position of equilibrium for equation one will shift towards the right-hand side, and then your PPT Will start to dissolve. So some of us might be using this as an explanation. Again, it's a bit in depth, but it's a more complete answer. By right, the ligand exchange targets the complex that is in aqueous medium, and because of that, it triggers the PPT to dissolve. But this is, I think, simpler. We just straight away target ammonia, target the PPT, and we just straight away form the deep blue complex. Now, the process is a bit simplified if you're using this, but the idea and explanation is still based on ligand exchange. Because of ligand exchange, the PPT dissolves. So it is like, like a simpler version of this thing. So you see which one that your school is using, stick with the explanation that your school is using. All right, so this one we need to memorize. Colors for the complex, your copper hydroxide precipitate is a pale blue PPT, your copper surrounded by four ammonia, two water plus two charge. This is the deep blue solution. And you notice if I compare the coordination number involving my copper, in this case, both of them are coordination number equals to six. There's no change in the coordination number and the shape with respect to copper. All right, the next example involving copper two plus with concentrated HCl. Now this one we also need to memorize, again, explicitly mentioned in syllabus, relatively new. So Basically, if I add con HCl, this is going to be a ligand exchange and I form a different complex. So I also need to memorize the shape and the color for this guy. Copper surrounded by four chloride. Overall, this is a two minus charge. And interestingly, this is coordination number equals to four. There's a change in coordination number from six to four. Octahedral change to tetrahedral complex. So I think it's good to take note of it. Later, we will comment on that. I think it's good to take note of that. There's a change in the coordination number. Shape with respect to the metal is affected. Now, color for this guy is yellow. So observation-wise, we can either see yellow solution, blue solution, or a mixture of two a different shades of green, depending on the relative concentration. And again, based on the Chartelus principle, if I want to favor the yellow solution, I can always add more corn HCl. So therefore, favor the four reaction, form more yellow species. And if I want to favor the formation of the blue solution, then basically what we do is we add more water, add more water, POE will shift towards the left-hand side, favor the formation of blue solution. So this one we also need to memorize. And take note of the formula for the complex and the coordination number. So remember, syllabus only wants me to memorize these two guys. The reason is because they want us to understand that when there's a ligand exchange, there will be a change in the color for the transition metal complex. That's the objective. The objective is not, I ask you to memorize two examples, means that you have to go and memorize the other colors for other complexes. That's not what we want. 
and it's not necessary for us to do that. So don't worry about memorizing the colors for complexes. We actually don't really need to do that. Next, we have one more example involving biological systems for ligand exchange. That is the exchange of your oxygen in hemoglobin. So under normal circumstances, your hemoglobin, which is the protein that carries oxygen in blood, and the metal that is in hemoglobin will be my iron metal. Oxidation state for iron is a plus two. So I think it's interesting, good to take note of that. And under normal circumstances, this is the process. Exchange involving oxygen and water to form oxyhemoglobin and deoxyhemoglobin. So iron is the one that is coordinated to your O2. And when the red blood cell travels to a region of higher concentration for O2 in the lungs, pick up oxygen and iron will be coordinated to O2. This is oxyhemoglobin. Then the red blood cell travel to the other parts of the body and it will give up the O2 for respiration. When the concentration for O2 is lower, so water will come in, displace your O2. So this is deoxyhemoglobin. So under normal circumstances, the exchange will be just between O2 and water between oxyhemoglobin and deoxyhemoglobin. Now, of course, when carbon monoxide comes along, since carbon monoxide, it is a very strong ligand, it binds very, very well with iron too. Once this guy is bounded to hemoglobin, then oxygen can no longer displace carbon monoxide. Of course, this is a bad thing. Eh? If we breathe in enough carbon monoxide, actually it is toxic or it is poisonous because your hemoglobin can no longer transport oxygen. This is the reason why carbon monoxide and cyanide, since they're very strong ligand, and they bind very, very well to certain transition metals. So they're considered toxic or poisonous in this case. We just need to have an appreciation involving this. Of course, there's no need for us to memorize the structure for hemoglobin, but we just want to have an application involving ligand exchange in biological system.